good morning yeah good morning so let me introduce myself my name is vishwanathan i am the secretary for green technology society malaysia and uh, we have been uh, quite a while in uh, green technology so yeah, hold on <clears throat> okay, what is the big uh, challenge in green technology currently? Is it that we are depleting the environmental resources or is it that we are not aware what is happening to our nature? And uh, what are the things that we can do to actually make this earth or this to be more sustainable? And what we can do to change or to shift in behavior so that we can have a better planet by the year of 2050, 2060. So for that, we have done a few master plans, okay? So liaise with UN's uh, master plans. We have uh, that, I mean, we have done a lot of uh, sets ups and uh, plans on that. So the capacity of the urge natural system is actually belongs to how we actually going to do to survive to flourish and how we're going to expand it so that our future generations will at least can enjoy what we are having currently all right so okay there are two pictures here can you see my presentation please David, David, is my presentation can be seen? Yes, yes. Can okay, good. Okay, there are there is two pictures here. One is industry, right? One, what is the industry doing now? It is polluting the environment with natural, uh, no, harmful gases. And what is the other guy doing? He is actually using his fishing rod to do what? All of us, we have our. Uh, weekdays uh, plannings, right? So we will be going for fishing and things like that. So what is the other guy doing? He's having his fish rod. Okay, imagine by doing the pollution, all right, the emission of these uh, companies, it pollutes the river, right? What happens to the fishes in the river? So nature has sustained itself for the billions of years by using solar energy, biodiversity, and neutral cycling, right? So uh, basically what we're doing is we are having our own uh, sustainable plans, okay? But nature, it has its own sustainability plans. But when we damage that sustainable, uh, sustainable plans, we are actually going to deplete its resources. So truly saying that our lives are, are actually depending on the energy from the sun and natural resources and national services provided by the earth, right? So when it happens, okay, when we start to deplete the resources, that is where all the other issues start to happen, all right? So let us start with a small video, okay? Here. What is natural capitalism? It is a way of doing business that recognizes the value of natural and human resources and life supporting ecological services. Here is a story to illustrate. In the 1950s in the Atlantic Northwest, equipment and technology made it possible to fish cod faster than the fish stocks could replenish. The cod was treated like an infinite resource no financial value was assigned to cod in the balance sheets, but income from selling the fish was. Using financial language, essentially we liquidated our capital of cod and called it income. In 40 short years, the Northern cod biomass fell to 1%. And in 1992, the Canadian government declared the moratorium, ending the region's 500 year run with the Northern. 
odd. As discussed in our triple bottom line video, the economy is part of society, which is part of the environment. This means all economic and social progress ultimately depends on the environment, the larger circle. That's natural capital. The ecosystem services and natural resources that we need to survive and thrive. The middle circle represents society or the human capital. Our economy is the smallest circle because it is governed by the rules, regulations, and structures of the other two circles. The economy depends on human capital and natural capital to thrive. In the collapse of the Northern Atlantic cod fishery, the environment circle of cod was destroyed when the fish were gone. Then the social circle of fishing communities on the eastern coast of Canada was badly damaged when people were out of work, and with it, the economic viability of the cod fisheries. What would a natural capitalism approach to this issue have looked like? Well, it would have meant feeding people and increasing material welfare by providing fish without impacting our resources and ecological systems. Imitating nature, also known as biomimicry, in the fishing processes and products, managing cod as a living resource and making sure it is not removed from the ocean faster than it naturally replenishes. And focusing on the service being provided, feeding people, and not only the product that provides it, the cod. This would have helped to create sustainable business models that feed people and support fishing communities while culling fewer fish. In other industries, focusing on the service rather than the product is called dematerialization, and this will be the subject of another video. Here is another example about an everyday product that we can all relate to. Say you are a clothing company making and selling jeans. What would accounting for natural capital look like? The value of cotton for fabric, of course, but also the plants used to make the dye that gives the jeans their color, copper and steel for rivets and zippers, plastic and leather for labels, and even the raw material for the machinery needed for dyeing, spinning, weaving, etc. It would also include the value of the human capital wherever the genes are made. All of this would be added to the production costs and compared with the income generated by selling the clothes. Essentially, natural capitalism means taking good care of the goose that lays the golden egg. What nature provides for your business should be on your balance sheet. Businesses all over the world are innovating and gaining competitive advantage from applying the natural capital business model. I will share some stories about some of these companies in a future video. Okay, I believe that uh, it has been a, a very good video which can explain on uh, what is it really about. So, so when this happened, right, when we are starting to deplete the sustainable capitals, right, I mean, I'm sorry, we deplete the natural capitals. So what happens is the, we are actually depleting the Earth's natural systems and human cultural systems to survive. Okay, so what happens is, this is what happens. When a factory, okay, it eliminates its wastage to the river, the fisheries will be badly affected and indirectly it affects the humans. So what we're doing is we are actually by uh, making uh, or depleting the nature capital, we are actually affected by our effects, right? So whatever that is around us, we call it as an environment, right? So let us say that the ecology, biology, the geology and the chemistry, whatever it is, all these are actually our environmental science and uh, the social sciences, the humanities, whatever ethics, philosophies, the social sciences, right? Everything is actually interrelated, right? So how nature work? Okay. Let us see the next slide later, then it will be explaining to us what really happens. Okay, We will be talking about dinosaurs, right? <laughs> so how the environment really affects us. Okay, how we affect the environment. 
okay, and how to deal with environmental problems and how to live more sustainability. Yeah, that are a few things, right? So that we can uh, split into five big topics. So just take it to the first one. Uh, how nature works. Uh, how, sorry, how nature works. Okay, number one. Nature evolved a few billion years ago, right? So at that point, whatever the Big Bang Theory or whatever it is, never mind. But the main important thing is nature evolved billions of years ago. So what happened to the dinosaurs? Okay. So, and then, how this environment affect us? Okay. How we affect the environment? What are the things that we do to really affect the environment? Okay. How do we deal with the environmental problems? Okay. And see, the first important thing is Whatever we do, we are actually relying on solar energy. Okay, sun. What is it doing? It just provides sun. It just provides warmth. It fuels the most important element of Earth. What is that? It fuels photosynthesis. Okay, what is the photosynthesis? Okay, you have a plant, and you have a human or a living organism. A living organism, right? Okay, what happens is the plant it inhales it inhales carbon dioxide and it exhales oxygen. Right? So that is important for another living organism to sustain. Okay, again go to the biodiversity. Okay, what are the natural systems and species that is available, right? Okay, then we have the chemical cycling. Okay, we have all these environment uh, things that, uh, that is uh, living organisms and everything. So we need that to sustain. And this is called as neutral cycling. Why? Because when uh, a deer in a forest, okay, the deer dies, what happens is it is dissolved back to the nature and it becomes a fertilizer and that fertilizer actually makes another plant to grow so indirectly we are actually making a sustainable circle of life right so when these things get disturbed what happens is we are actually going to deplete the natural capital All right let's go to the next one okay this is the evolving of human, right? So we started 3.5 billion years ago. Then we have the multicellular life. And then we have the land, all the land plants and everything. But dinosaurs, it came 65 million years ago. But it is depleted as well. If it is here, and definitely we are not here, right? So you know, Homo sapiens happens around 200,000 years ago, which is an evolution of what we are now, right? So what is it? Solar energy is the major life form, okay? To create the life form, okay? We have all this biodiversity and we have this chemical recycling, okay? We take the water, we take the plants, we take the air, okay? So that is actually fueling the sustainable living of all the living organisms, right? Okay, nature capital is actually sorted by solar capital. Okay, it's a usual materials and energy in the nature, right? So uh, we want to make sure that all the nature forces such as renewal of air, water and soils, okay? To make that, we have to make sure that we use all these resources carefully, right? And then, human degrade nature capital, as what I told you before, right? So we degrade nature capital. There is no someone else from space is coming and uh, degrading it, right? 
So, and scientific solutions needed for environmental sustainability, right? So, you see here, <clears throat> we have our coal seam, okay, at the bottom, okay? We have our coal seam here, and we have a neutral recycling, okay, and we have our plant, okay? And then we have our renewable uh, resources, and we have our non-renewable resources. Do you know what is a non-renewable resources? Once you extract this out, it is gone. Okay? And you take out the coal, it is gone. Yeah? Similar to fossil fuels. We might say that now all the cars are going to be running on an electrical vehicle and we won't be depending on fossil fuels. Right? So, there will be movable parts inside the cars. It still needs fossil fuels, that's grease, okay, whatever oils, right, the transmissions and everything, you still need fossil fuels. So we are actually depleting that resources as well, right? So in terms of uh, energy, we have sun, wind and water force. And air, when we damage the air, we are actually depleting the ozone layer, the water treatments, right? So when we are actually damaging the water, we need to do something to do the waste treatments, okay? And then population control is about, I mean, uh, out of the topic here, like, okay? But the pest control is very important. Why? Because we are actually damaging the land's quality, right? So the most important thing is let it make it as Okay, if I'm going to go into a forest, I'm going to cut down one tree, I have to make sure that I have to replace it with two trees, right? So that is how the basic calculation is going to be. So with that, I'll make sure that my nature resources is not depleted. Similar goes to when the food or whatever is uh, produced in the soil, I have to make sure that whatever automated system that is provided by the nature is not disturbed, okay? The living organism, they poo, right? They poo. That poo actually goes as a fertilizer, okay? When you take that animals and you're going to park it somewhere else, the land doesn't get the fertilization. So you're using uh, alternative fertilizers. The alternative fertilizers are actually made from what? It's made from chemicals. That is indirectly affecting the land. Right? So that is how some things that are uh, uh, affecting the nature. Alright? So, this picture can explain to you what is really happening, right? The natural capital degradation. So you can see that this whole mass of land is gone. So we did not replace it with trees. So what happens is we come up with buildings and things like that. Okay, what happens is this natural resource is actually gone. So what we can do? We cannot go to Mars and we can uh, uh, build another uh, big uh, forest to replace this, we have only one house. Yeah, we are only having earth. Okay, so we have to do, and we have to think of ways to actually expand this, right? So resource, anything we obtain from the environment to meet our needs, right? Okay, these are the renewable and uh, something that we can get it immediately. Okay, like sunlight. We go out, we get the sunlight. Some resources we cannot get it directly, like petroleum. Okay, if you want to do pet take out petroleum, what are the processes you have to do, right? You have to take out the crude oil, you have to make it into certain uh, processes, and then only you get the petroleum. Similar to that, perpetual source, the solar energy, it has variety of uh, eligible energy inside. So. We can uh, use it for plants, trees, 
okay, and whatever other resources, right? But the most important thing is this solar can be used on a photosynthesis basis and also to change it into become uh, electrical and other kinetic sources, right? So renewable resources, okay, we have renewable resources, but it will take years, right, to renew, like forests, groundlands, fresh air, fertile soil, because whatever we do, whatever we use the water, the water is not being taken out from this planet out. It is still here. Okay, the river goes up, I mean, uh, it condenses up and comes back as a river, as uh, rainy and everything like that, right? So we're not actually taking it out, okay? But how about the non-renewable resources, like energy resources, metallic and uh, mineral resources, non-metallic mineral resources, what we can do for that? Okay, we are using iron. Another 50 years on the go, we're going to deplete that. So what is the benefits that uh, the future generation going to have if we are going to replace it? What, how how we would actually replace it? So there are some things that we have to look into, right? We have to look into how to reuse whatever resources that we're having currently and how to recycle that things have been used. Like you have a mouse, okay? Inside the mouse, we have electrical chips and that electrical chips got pins. That pins is actually recycled back, all right? All the iron and metals can be recycled back. We are, we are not going to dump it off. Okay. If we just dump it off, that means we are wasting that 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 one material is totally gone. Okay. Similar goes to a bicycle. You take a bicycle out, okay, all the body is made of metal. That metal can be recycled back to be changed from and to be used for a different uh, matters, right? Okay, this is glass. How are we going to reuse the glass? Yeah, there are ways, right, that we can actually match it down because it's made of silica. Okay, silica is made of what? Sand, right? So we're actually depleting the silica, right? Without taking out from uh, other resources, we can actually reuse the same resources, right? Similar thing goes, huh? We are actually living in uh, environmental degradation. We are wasting, okay? We are actually depleting and degrading the, it just, uh, the Earth's natural capital, okay? And in fact, at a very, very accelerating rate. So if you are I'm going to talk about the statistics of what we are doing actually, it's going to be very alarming, right? So let's see, the air pollution, okay? it creates a climate change, okay? Shrinking of forests, it is decreasing the wildlife habitats. Habitats, huh? Okay, and then it creates species extinction. Okay, and then it creates soil erosion, okay? And because we are actually depleting the water, I mean, uh, the, the sand uh, quality here, we don't have the filtrations the natural filtration is not happening here. So immediately we have this water pollution. When the water pollution is there, it declines the ocean fisheries. So all these are the effects of whatever been done actually, all right? So what is the source of pollution? The main source is smokes, right? And non-point sources are pesticides. We blow into air. Okay, what are the main type of pollution? Okay, the first one is a biodegradable. That is okay. Okay, but what is a non-degradable? Like plastics. It's good that now we are actually looking into plastic that can be changed into a different form and uh, we can make it back to the pellets and we can uh, go for other things, right? But and uh, some of them are actually using for roads and things like that. So that, that is actually good. non degradable can be reused, okay? But biodegradable plastics, 
it is not a big town, but it is still a pollutant for the nature, right? So, how we can reduce this? Okay, we have to do a pollution cleanup. Output pollution cleanup control should be done. Okay, and then we have to do pollution prevention. We have to start from the very root. Okay, companies, they have to come up with plans to actually reduce these pollutions. And uh, output pollution, whatever pollution is already done, damage is already done, we must make sure that that pollution control should be in place. Right? So you see, uh, this picture can explain to you everything. Right? What is the damage we're doing? Forest flames, the energy, I mean, the uh, smokes from the factories and other burnings and things like that. We are actually damaging, right? What is this? A wonderful river, right? Is it beautiful? Nah, it's not beautiful. Why? Because too much of dumps, huh? all the uh, garbages have been dumped here. And the worst part is, you can see majority of it is plastic bottles which is non biodegradable and it will take years uh, to actually dissolve. And you, have, you can see that there is a, what, what is this? Uh, this is a fridge, right? Okay, then you have the thermal coil inside. This one is non biodegradable as well. So indirectly, we are damaging. Okay, so what is the ecological footprint? The biologically, uh, productive land and water needed to provide people in the region, okay, which renewable resources, okay. So that is what we have to look into, per capita ecological footprint, okay. If we make it unsustainable, then the damages that we are going to do is, is totally vast. Yeah? So <clears throat> these are certain uh, Patterns of natural resource. Okay, what you can see here, this picture. You have cars, you have energy, yeah? you have uh, families, and you have living organism. Okay, all these are actually patterns of what we are actually using every day. All these are made of what? Wood. So indirectly, <clears throat> We are actually taking out the resource from forest, right? Are we doing any, uh, I mean, uh, effects to actually resolve this issue? No, actually. So, uh, Malaysian uh, current strategy is to uh, plant 100,000 trees and we have merely reached 20% of it, right? So, what we're going to do about it? Okay, see, less development countries. We have more population. Okay, the consumer consumption per person have increased. The technological uh, technological impact per consumption is actually depleting, right? And the environmental impact of the pollution is very very high. Okay, what we get from solar and uh, the wind energy is actually very less. Okay. But the solar, I mean, the, the solid waste is actually increasing, right? So what is the tipping point here? Okay, see, eh? we have time delays between our actions now and deterioration effects later. So we can actually look into long-term climate change. We can uh, reduce overfishing so that we can uh, reduce the species extinction, right? So, uh, I can just fix this up. Okay, we have our agricultural resources previously. And then we have our industrial medical revolution. Now, we are looking into information and globalization revolutions. All these are actually depleting the natural resources. Why? Because we're using a lot of electronic devices. Devices are made from nature, right? Okay, so if I count it, right, we have four major damages. One is the population growth, sustainable, unsustainable resource use, poverty, 
excluding environmental causes from market prices, right? This four is the major thing that really affecting, right? Harmful environment impact due to high level of consumptions, high levels of pollutions, and unnecessary waste of resources. See, we are wasting water, okay? We're using natural resources, right? We are building uh, tables, chairs, and everything, right? But that is thrown away after use. We are not recycling it. Okay, everyone can uh, provide funding for de developing uh, technologies to reduce pollution, environmental degradation, and uh, resource waste. So, what we have to think about now? Okay, the number of people in the population, right? So, what is the current status? Adequate sanitation facilities. I would say that we have just reached 38 percent of it. Okay, enough fuel to heating and cooling. Yeah, electricity, clean drinking water, adequate healthcare, adequate housing, and enough food for good health. We are lack of access to all of this, right? So companies they don't care. They don't pay for the environmental cost of the resource use. Why? Because they have to make profit out of everything. But I'm not blaming company for that because companies, they must make sure that and they will have their own uh, regulations and things like that. But whatever damage is done by the waste that is eliminated from the companies is none, okay? None in the control of the company actually, okay? Goods and services who does not, I mean, do not include the harmful environmental costs, okay? Companies receive tax breaks and subsidies, okay? And then economy may be stimulated, but there may be a decreation in uh, of uh, natural uh, capital, right? Okay, we take this car as an example. Okay, it's a really unfriendly. Why? It is eliminating smoke, right? It's creating emissions. So what we can do, okay? Number one, we can look into environmental ethics. What is right and wrong? And how we treat the environment, okay? We can look into planetary management, world view. Huh? We are separate from and in charge of nature, okay? And then we have our stewardship of world view. Manage Earth from our benefit and ethical responsibility. To be stewards, right? And environmental wisdom worldview. We are the part of the nature and we must engage in sustainable use. Okay, because this is our home. And we have to make sure that we are taking care of it. Okay. If our home we have any problems, we have to make sure that we have to resolve the issues, right? Okay. <clears throat> so environmentally sustainable society meets the current needs while ensuring the needs of the future generation will be met. So this is what we as Green Technology Society, we are doing that, right? We are creating awareness and uh, we are creating plans, okay? Working together with uh, government departments to make sure that whatever that is done, whatever damage that is done, it can be reduced, right? So we are, living, we are living on natural income of natural capital without diminishing the nature capital. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good word. Eh? Live on natural income of natural capital without diminishing the natural capital. That means we want to enjoy the resources from natural capital, but we don't want to diminish the nature capital, right? So what is social capital? Okay, we have already talked about uh, financial, human, so now social capital. We have to come up with ways to do communications, right? To come up with plans, to have a cooperation, okay? And uh, to work together to solve this environmental problem, okay? Uh, okay. To be, to be frank, uh, we have another 100 to 
50 to 100 ringgits to change the sustainability before it's too late. Okay, we are fully relying on uh, renewable energy, right? But most of the cases we are still re relying on the non renewable energy, like uh, the current uh, technology, like uh, electrical vehicles and things like that. It will actually reduce the uh, the reliability uh, of uh, uh, a non renewable energy. Sorry. Okay, so we have to protect the biodiversity. Okay, the forest, the species in the forest. Okay, we have to make sure that we have to protect it and we have to reduce the water and pollution, right? So, and then we have to enhance and harness wind power. Okay, we have to start planting trees, right? So, there will be three big ideas of this, huh? maybe I make it as a conclusion. We could rely more on renewable energy from the sun, including indirect form of solar energy such as wind and flowing water to meet most of our heating and electricity needs. Okay? And then, number two, we can protect biodiversity but preventing degradation of Earth's species, ecosystems, and natural processes, and by restoring areas we have degraded. As I said before, you cut one tree, you plant two trees. Because the tree to grow, it won't be today you plant, tomorrow you have a big plant, or tomorrow you have a big tree. Oh, okay, it will take quite some time. So we start now so that we can give the other generations, the coming generations, something that what we have enjoyed now, right? Third one, we can help to sustain Earth's natural capital, chemical cycles by reducing our productions of wastes, okay, and pollution. We don't want to overload natural systems with harmful chemicals, right? Okay, don't pollute people with, uh, with all these pesticides, okay? Nowadays, you go to market, huh, you want to eat any uh, sayo also very hard, right? You are, you are not sure whether it's really good or not, right? So we are actually damaging the nature. So we have to make sure that we don't want to, uh, I mean, remove, we don't want to remove the natural chemicals, okay? So that the chemical cycles can replace it. Okay, normally the nature can do that chemical recycle, I mean, chemical cycles. We don't want to damage that, right? So with that, I end my uh, explanations and uh, my, my uh, theory of uh, managing nature capital. So I hope that I have uh, somehow or other given you some uh, good inputs and uh, I'm really looking into how we can help the nature. With that, thank you very much. Right?